Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Sunday School. Remember last week we talked about our Bible lesson that Jesus had risen from the dead? Well, we're going to continue on with that story today with the next part of our lesson. And there were two people that were walking home after Jesus had been crucified. Their names were Cleopas and then the other person, we don't know their name. We think it might have been Cleopas's wife. You know, the Bible tells us that Cleopas's wife was Mary's sister, the mother of Jesus. And so this would have been Jesus's aunt and uncle. And as Cleopas and this other person were walking down the road, they were so sad. They had thought about how Jesus had been crucified and their hearts were just so heavy. They lived in a town that was about seven miles away from Jerusalem and that was called Emmaus. And as they began to walk down the road, suddenly Jesus showed up with them. They did not recognize Jesus at the time, but Jesus began to talk with them. And he said, why are you talking and looking so sad? And they, they looked at Jesus and they said, surely you're not from around here because you would have heard what happened in Jerusalem last week. And so Jesus said, what did happen in Jerusalem last week? And they began to tell him, about how Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, had been arrested and had been killed by the Roman soldiers. Jesus was somebody who had done many miracles, and he had given them hope that maybe he could help free them from the Roman rulers, and he could save them and be the Messiah. But he had died. And as he began to talk to them, Jesus didn't allow them to know who he was. And he said, how foolish these people are. Don't they remember what the Messiah and the prophets had said was going to happen? And he said, remember in the Old Testament, in the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah said that the Messiah was going to come and die, and he was going to rise again. And Jesus began to explain the scriptures to them. But again, they don't know that it's Jesus. They were surprised at all that he knew about the Bible. Well, as they began to talk and, and spend time together, they were getting closer to their home. And so Cleopas and his wife invited Jesus to come have supper with them. Well, pretty soon, Cleopas' wife had made them dinner. And he had gotten ready to set the table and put everything out. And so they asked Jesus to say the blessing, to ask for, to say the prayer for supper. And they began to pray. And as Jesus began to pray, and they opened their eyes, he broke the bread, and all of a sudden, their eyes were opened. They could not believe it, but Jesus was sitting there eating dinner with them. They were so surprised. And when they saw that it was Jesus, Jesus disappeared. He was gone from the room. He didn't walk out, but he was just gone. Well, Cleopas and his wife were so excited and surprised that they decided to not even finish their supper. They left all their food on the table and they took off running back to Jerusalem. Now, remember, how many miles is it back to Jerusalem? Do you remember how many miles, Hannah? At least 15. Seven. Seven miles back to Jerusalem. Can you imagine walking seven miles? Now they've already done seven, so it's 14 miles. And they ran up to a place where the disciples and Jesus' friends were. They were in a room, they, they, they called it the upper room, which it means a room that's upstairs. And they said, you will not believe who walked home with us today. Jesus is alive. He's risen from the dead and he's no longer in that grave. They said, we saw him have dinner with us. And as they began to tell the disciples of the good news in that upper room, Jesus showed up in that upper room. You know, these disciples were upstairs locked up in that room and they were so afraid. They thought that maybe the Roman soldiers might come and arrest them and kill them next. It was a really dark, scary time. You know, when we're at home and we're trying not to get sick and we have a lot of changes in our lives, we could be afraid or nervous. But did you know, boys and girls, that Jesus is with us? He's there right with us wherever we are. And Jesus showed up in that upper room with the disciples to help encourage them. And as he showed up, they were excited but also scared. Because the last time they had seen Jesus, he was dead. And here's this man who looks just like Jesus. And they were afraid. And so Jesus said, do you know what? I'm hungry. Do you have something to eat? And Jesus did this so that they would not be afraid any longer. And so they made Jesus some fish. And they made that fish and served it to Jesus and he ate it. 
And then they weren't afraid any longer. They had never seen a dead person eat before. And so they knew that Jesus was not dead any longer. He was alive. And after he had that special dinner with the disciples and his friends, he began to remind them about the Bible and what the Bible had said. The Bible had said that Jesus was going to come to earth as the Messiah. He was going to die, and then he was going to raise from the dead three days later. And he wanted them to remember those things so that they could know that Jesus was alive. And as he began to explain those things to them, Jesus said, I want you all to go and tell everybody else the good news that I am alive. Well, there was one disciple, one follower of Jesus that wasn't there that night. Brent, do you remember who that follower was that wasn't there? Doubting Thomas. Yes, Thomas. Now, Brent gave him a nickname, Doubting Thomas, but back then they just called him Thomas. And Thomas wasn't in that upper room. And later on he said, you know what? I don't think you guys are telling me the truth. I don't believe that Jesus showed up in the upper room, and I'm not going to believe that until I see Jesus' hands where he was crucified with the nails, and until I see the side where the spear poked into his side. And Thomas didn't believe that Jesus had showed up in that room that night. Well, eight days later, the disciples and Jesus' friends were upstairs in that same room, and this night Thomas was there, and Jesus showed up again. And this time, Thomas saw Jesus. And Thomas, Jesus looked right at Thomas. He said, Thomas, come over here. Look at these hands. Would you like to touch the place where I was crucified? Look on my side where the spear poked my side. And by then, Thomas didn't even want to do that. He knew that it was Jesus, that he had risen from the dead. And Jesus fell down and said, my Lord, Th Thomas fell down to Jesus and said, my Lord, my God. And he knew that this was Jesus, and he worshipped him. Well, after he worshipped him, Jesus told Thomas, You believe because you have seen, but blessed are the ones that haven't seen but still believe. Jesus was thinking about the Christians that would come along later and the people that weren't saved that would hear about Jesus and have a chance to trust in Jesus and, and have him be their Savior. Well, if you haven't believed in him, you can do it right now. Our craft for today is going to be how to upcycle broken crayons. I have a lot of broken crayons in my classroom and I don't like to throw them away and I found something useful to do with them. I have these Lego molds that I bought at Legoland but you can also buy them online. They're made out of silicone so they're heat proof where you can heat them up and this is what the first one looks like. It looks like the bricks that you build Legos with and then this is the second one this looks like the little Lego minifigures. And what you need to do is to take the crayon and take all the paper off of the crayon. And you can unpeel it, boys and girls, if you want to do that yourself. Or you can have your parents take something sharp like this and cut the, the paper off of it. That goes a lot faster, but that's something that the grown-ups should do. Once you peel all of your crayons, you want to break them into little pieces like this. So I have a crayon that's broken into maybe a third or a fourth and I put the little pieces inside the mold. You can do one color or you could mix your colors up. I like the different colors mixed together and so you fill up the molds. And then I did the same thing with this one right here that has the little Lego minifigures in it. Then you want to microwave it and I microwaved this one for six and a half minutes and it melted the crayons completely. And then you want to let it cool off and, and get hard. This one took a little bit longer. This one took eight minutes to microwave. And the little Lego minifigures, you have to be careful when you pop them out that you don't make the head come off because it's a little bit skinny through there. Well, this is what it looks like when you take it out. You've got the little Lego minifigures like this. And they're crayons that you can draw with. And then here are a couple of the bricks that I made. And you can see I swirled the colors together and made them different colors. And then these are what they look like stacked together. They actually stack just like a Lego do, like that. And that's how we upcycle broken crayons.
Our Sunday school snack for today is called a no-bake cookie ball. And I have four cups of oatmeal. The nice thing I like about these no-bake cookies are that we don't have to cook them at all. It's something that you can do without turning on your oven. So there's four cups of oatmeal. And then I have a cup of honey that we're going to put in there. We have a cup of peanut butter, and you can use regular peanut butter or the crunchy kind. If you have a peanut butter allergy, you could use a different kind of butter, like almond. Then I have two teaspoons of vanilla. And we're going to stir this around. The last ingredient I think you all are going to like a lot. It is M&Ms, and I have a cup of M&Ms in there. And we'll go ahead and pour those M&Ms in. I use the small ones, but you could use the regular size ones too. After you stir it all up and everything is mixed together, you would take a cookie scoop like this and you just get a scoop like that and then you'll want to put it in the refrigerator and you can keep that in the refrigerator for up to two weeks. This is good for two weeks and then you have a snack ready to go anytime you're hungry and you don't even have to cook it. So there's a picture of the cookie no-bake balls.